bus driver, Daryl. Hi, kids. I'm Conductor Cam. And I am Mrs. C. Welcome to the Crossroads. We are going on an adventure as we read the Bible and take a journey with Jesus. What path are you on? Did you choose to travel with Jesus? So let's stand at the crossroads and look. We're going to ask for the ancient past, the ways from long ago that God taught us in his word. We are going to ask where the wood way is. And we will walk in it, and then we will find rest for our souls. Check it out. Stand at the crossroads and look. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient path. Ask where the good way is. And walk in it. And you will find rest for your soul. And you will find rest for your soul. Stand at the crossroads and look. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient path. Ask where the good way is. And walk in it, and you will find rest for your soul. And you will find rest for your soul. Hi guys, welcome to our brand new unit where we are now on the island. We are thinking about how God is gracious and he is good. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in loving kindness. Psalm 145 verse eight. We are gonna think about hospitality and compassion versus being lonely and indifferent on the island. Let's think about how also we are not forgotten even when we feel like we are isolated and alone. God is gracious and good and he is with us.
Grab your binoculars and look at God's work everywhere you go. Remember, He is always with you wherever you go. How did you see God in your travels this week? As we travel to different crossroads, we will visit different places and situations like hills and valleys and see that God never changes. The desert where God meets all our needs. The pasture where we learn that God is love. An island where we practice hospitality. Where even one small act of reaching out can mean so much. If we seek God first, the wisdom of how to bless others will be clear to us every day. Hebrews 13 verse 16 of the Message Version says it this way, Make sure you don't take things for granted and go slack in working for the common good. Share what you have with others. God takes particular pleasure in acts of worship, a different kind of sacrifice that takes place in kitchen and workplace and on the streets. In this way, we can love one another, you guys. That all being said, here's a little song to encourage you to continue to practice living it out. Practice hospitality and bless someone today by asking God, please show me the way. Text someone encouragement, give a donation, join the prayer chain, be kind while driving, invite someone to dinner, bring someone a treat, send someone a card, lend a helping hand, pay for someone's meal, donate pop cans, look for ways to serve, and ask God please show me the way. In all the adventures of life, God is with us and He knows us by name. He will never leave us and He will walk with us through everything we go through. The good, the bad, the happy, the sad, the easy, the hard, when we understand, or when we are confused. No matter what we face, God will be with us all on the journey. This week, we are thinking about the story of baby Moses and how he was drawn out of the water by a princess. Now, Exodus 2 verse 10 says, When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Moses had an experience where he had hospitality and compassion from Pharaoh's daughter, a princess. He was not left lonely and isolated and rejected, but instead he was adopted into a brand new family. This was a way of hospitality and compassion to be shown to a helpless baby. Hebrews 11 verse 23 says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. You see, the king had said that all the babies that were boys needed to die. That was very, very upsetting and sad, but the parents protected him and kept him safe. And when it was time, they trusted that God had a plan for this little baby boy. Now Romans 8, 28 talks about this. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Some of us face some really hard, sad situations in our life, but we need to trust that God is with us and that no matter what we face, he promises he will never leave us alone. He will always be with us and he will walk with us through everything even if we feel like we are isolated and lonely and even indifferent to our situation, that means we don't even care. God still cares. He still loves us and he still showers us with his hospitality, his compassion, and his love for us. Check out the story and let's learn more about baby Moses and a princess.
It may not have looked like a promising future after Joseph was rejected by his own brothers and sold into slavery. But God had a plan that included mercy and a mighty deliverance. He raised Joseph out of slavery and into a powerful position over all of Egypt and revealed to him things that no one else knew. When famine came, Joseph was prepared and many lives were saved, including the brothers who had once despised him. With open arms, Joseph received his father Jacob, his brothers, and all their families. They lived happily together in Egypt, enjoying the blessings of God's great deliverance. But time passed, and a new pharaoh rose to power who did not know Joseph or remember how God had delivered them from famine and certain death. Instead, he felt threatened by the people of Israel, who were now growing in numbers and strength. Out of fear and evil in his heart, this new king forced the people of Israel into slavery and did everything he could to stop them from becoming a mighty people. Yet another pharaoh attempted to destroy the people of Israel by demanding that every son born to the Hebrews be killed. Throw them into the Nile River, he commanded. He would rather murder them than watch them continue to live in the goodness and blessings of God. Little did this king know that he sought to destroy a nation of people God had promised would be great. God was preparing his people for one of the greatest deliverance stories of all time. During the time of Pharaoh's evil order, a Hebrew woman gave birth to a baby boy. She named him Moses. Seeing that he was no ordinary child, and his life was already marked with God's favor and mercy, Moses' mother hid him from Pharaoh's men as long as she could. When she could no longer keep him hidden, she devised a hopeful plan. She built a strong basket and coated it with tar and pitch so that it would float like a tiny little boat. She then placed baby Moses inside, took him down to the Nile River, and hid him in the tall grass along the water's edge. As she watched him drift down the river toward an unknown future, tears filled her eyes. She was sad to let him go, but her hope was in God. Moses' sister Miriam ran along the riverbank, watching the basket as it swiftly drifted downstream. She anxiously looked ahead, hoping for a miracle to save her little brother's life. The basket soon broke away from the bulrushes and plants, and came into view of an Egyptian princess and her maidens who were bathing in the river. When the princess noticed the curious basket floating in the water, she sent one of her maidens to fetch it. What a surprise to see such a beautiful child looking up at her. His cries melted her heart. Immediately she recognized it was a Hebrew baby boy. I will raise him as my own, she said, as she held on to the child protectively. So Moses began a life of privilege and pleasure among the royals in Egypt. But one day he would give it all up to gain a treasure that only God could give. God can make good come out of any bad situation that we face. That is a really important idea. And the reason is God is gracious and he is good. He loves us so much that everything we go through, he finds a way to make it come out good because he is gracious and good. We can choose to also show others hospitality and compassion, just like Pharaoh's daughter did for baby Moses. We can choose to not turn our back. We can choose to not be lonely and indifferent on our island 
but instead show island hospitality that is fun and loving and kind and compassionate. We can be encouragers of others. We can choose to stay with Jesus on the trail. We can remain with him and we can invite others on the trail with us. And as we do our journey of faith, keep remembering that God is gracious and good and he will be with us every step of the way. And keep reading God's word. For as we do, we can learn and grow and we can have the strength and wisdom to show others hospitality and compassion. Content or covet? God is my rock and God is self-sufficient. Which way are you going to go? Love or selfish? God is my rock and God is loving. Which way are you going to go? Hospitality and compassion versus lonely and indifferent. is gracious and good. Which way are you going to go? Just or fair? God is my rock and God is just. Which way are you going to go? Reverence or disrespect? God is my rock. God is all powerful, holy, and glorious. Which way are you going to go? Truth or lies? God is my rock. God is faithful. Which way are you going to go? Wisdom or impulse? God is my rock. God is wise. Which way are you going to go? Patience or restless? God is my rock. God is all-knowing. Hey guys, with every crossroad we face, we get to choose if we want God's help or not. We get to choose which way to go. We can remain in God's word and he will help us know what to do every day with everything we face. We can also invite friends on the journey with us so they can know God and join Jesus in heaven for all eternity. What will you choose? Will you choose to follow Jesus? Will you remain in Christ and seek him with all of your heart? Will you invite others to join you on the journey of faith? Choose, remain, invite, and keep seeking God every step of the way. Bye.